bored with clones? Apparently people are cloning their own pets. Dog cloning is now a hot commodity among those that can afford such a bizarre luxury. Apparently these scientists and researchers are on board, they might also have some cautionary tales to share. Here are the top 10 animal cloning experiments that went horribly wrong. Starting off in our number 10 spot we have Dolly the sheep. We had to start this list off with Dolly today because she really set the stage for everything on this list to come. You may have heard of Dolly the sheep before and that is because she made history in 1996 when she was born. This is because she was the very first mammal to be cloned from an adult somatic cell. The process of cloning to create her involved nuclear transfer from a cell taken from the mammary gland. Basically they transferred the nucleus from the adult cell into an unfertilized premature egg that had its nucleus removed and boom cloned sheep. This was huge for the scientific community because of the fact that it not only showed that cloning can be successful in mammals but also because it showed that a cloned organism can be produced from a mature cell from a specific body part. While Dolly made history, she also sadly only lived a relatively short life. She ended up being euthanized just before her seventh birthday because of the fact that she had a progressive lung disease as well as arthritis, both of which are said not to be linked to her cloning origins. I guess it's kind of cool that Dolly existed and the fact that we have these scientific abilities is amazing, but there's also something pretty ominous about it. I just hope we use these powers to do things like bringing back extinct animals, maybe? rather than some weird mad scientist type of stuff. In our number 9 spot today we have Sam Rupa. After the birth of Dolly the Sheep, scientists everywhere began trying their hand at cloning and that is when Sam Rupa was born. Back in 2009, Sam Rupa was born in India and was a murrah buffalo which is known as being the best known milking buffalo since these animals can be capable of producing 35 kilograms of milk a day. The birth of Sam Rupa marked a breakthrough in the country because it put India on the map as one of the few countries at the time who had the capabilities to clone and this was all done using a new at the time landmark technique which was called hand guided cloning. The scientists who helped to create Sam Rupa worked on the calf for four years so it's clear that they were all very excited about its birth. Unfortunately however shortly after Sam Rupa's birth things went seriously wrong. Just five days after birth Sam Rupa unfortunately succumbed to a lung infection and passed away. While the scientists weren't able to save the animal, it is very clear that its birth and short life helped scientists in remarkable ways that went on to inform them in future experiments and projects. In our number 8 spot today we have the Pyrenean Ebex. The Pyrenean Ebex is an animal that went extinct around 2000. In a horrible turn of events, the last one was a female named Celia and she was killed in an awful falling tree incident. A subspecies of the Spanish Ebex, the Pyrenean Ebex were native to the Pyrenees mountains on the border of Spain and France. Back in the medieval ages their population was reduced drastically to an endangered level. This is due to two things, being hunted as well as the spread of human disease. Flash forward to 2003 however and scientists tried to bring them back to life. This is the first extinct creatures that scientists ever tried to clone that is absolutely crazy for seven minutes. DNA from Celia, the last living individual of the species was taken and implanted into the womb of a domestic goat. From here the clone was in fact born but due to lung complications was unable to survive for longer than seven minutes. It was a short life but a monumental one that definitely broke new ground in the scientific world. In our number seven spot today we have Garima 1. Garima is similar to Sam Rupa that we already talked about and in fact she was born in the same place, the National Dairy Research Institute, just shortly after Sam Rupa and luckily her birth did end up being more successful considering she made it past the first year of life. She was actually cloned on June 6th, 2009 and things seemed to be going quite well until around June and July of 2011. Garima was created through the same hand guided cloning technique as Sam Rupa, so it's clear that the technique was evolving and getting better, but things still unfortunately went awry. When things took a turn for the worst, doctors struggled to figure out exactly what was the problem, but eventually it was revealed that her problem was with her heart. Researchers revealed that her heart was abnormally overweight and much larger in size than other buffaloes her same age, and this likely led to the complications 
she faced that sadly culminated in her passing in August of 2011. In our number six spot today, we have the Argali. In the earlier days of cloning experiments, scientists attempted to clone an Argali, which is also known as a type of mountain sheep. These sheep are known to roam the highlands of Western East Asia, the Himalayas, Tibet, and the Altai Mountains. The reason they wanted to clone these sheep is because they are important to the ecosystems they live in, and unfortunately, they are a threatened species. Now, I know there's controversy over the cloning of threatened or extinct species, but personal opinions aside, they were making this attempt to see if this could be a viable way to potentially save a species. Unfortunately, however, these attempts would prove to be futile. Using the same techniques used in the instance of Dolly the sheep, the somatic cell nuclear transfer, while they believed it would be promising, all attempts to clone the mammal failed to produce any viable results, and thus, modern science wasn't able to assist in the continuation of this species. But in good news, while the species is still threatened, it is still around and not quite endangered, although its life is mainly threatened due to trophy hunters and ranchers. In our number five spot today, we have the gar. A gar is a species of wild cattle that is native to South Asia and Southeast Asia, and unfortunately, they're listed as a vulnerable species on the IUCN red list, and they have been since 1986. This is exactly why, in 2001, scientists decided it was time to try and clone one. With a population that has declined over 70% in the last three generations, they seemed like a perfect candidate to become the first ever endangered species to be cloned. In 2001, at the Trans Ova Genetic Center in Sioux Center, Iowa, they were able to birth a clone gar. They obviously used gar DNA, but used a domestic cow as a surrogate mother to carry the clone. This, of course, was a huge breakthrough, but unfortunately, the life of the gar was cut short as the calf passed away within 48 hours of its birth. Although this is obviously terrible, I guess the upside is that it is believed that the calf passed due to dysentery, which is not thought to have been related to the cloning process, which does mean that although the outcome wasn't as predicted or hoped, the cloning could still be considered a success. In our number four spot today, we have Injaz. With a name that means achievement, she clearly was exactly that, because Injaz was the first camel clone ever produced. She was born back in 2009 at the Camel Reproduction Center in Dubai, and she certainly was a proud accomplishment for all of those who worked to create and raise her. In fact, the cloning of Injaz was such a success that she lived for over a decade. Her birth prompted the center to continue cloning camels, which they did about 20 to 25 times a year in the time after Injaz was born. She broke ground once again when she proved that cloned camels could in fact conceive and give birth naturally, and she did so a few times, but in the end, it would be this that led to her demise. On her fourth calf, as she carried it, it grew to be too big for her to carry, which unfortunately led to dystocia late in her pregnancy. Scientists did their best to save her, but unfortunately, they lost both of them. Everyone who worked to care for Injaz was rightfully extremely upset at her passing, but they clearly used her and her success as a starting point for what was to come. Now this center is turning out dozens of cloned camels every year, so I'm going for $55,000. Not sure how I feel about that, but you know, whatever. In our number three spot today, we have the Bantang. Back in 2003, scientists at the Advanced Cell Technology of Worcester, Massachusetts were ecstatic when they successfully birthed a clone Bantang, which is an endangered species of cattle. To do this, they actually took frozen tissues from a male of the species that passed away many years earlier in 1980. They used these skin cells and inserted the nuclei into cow eggs, and a cow was used as a surrogate mother. They attempted this with 16 pregnancies, two Two of which came to term. With the success of one clone did come the birth of another identical twin who was born to a different cow mother, but despite being carried to term and birthed, this clone was not as expected. It was twice the normal birth weight, which quickly proved to be a very negative sign. As for the clone who was considered a success, it was hand raised at the San Diego Wild Animal Park's Infant Isolation Unit. Unfortunately, however, due to an injury that the animal got when it was less than seven years old, it did end up passing away, which meant that sadly the clone only lasted for about half the expected lifespan for this species of animal. In our number two spot today, we have the woolly mammoth. We would certainly be missing a very important animal on this list if we didn't include the woolly mammoth. These guys were of course a species of mammoth, and in fact, they were one of the last in line of the mammoth species. Because of the fact that in both Alaska and Siberia there were frozen carcasses discovered, they're actually one of the most well-studied extinct creatures. Exactly why or how they were driven to extinction is widely 
heavily debated. And another thing people like to debate is whether or not we should try and bring them back. There was a genome project completed in 2015, and since then it has been proposed the species could be revived through a few different means, but no one has yet taken the leap. Here's the thing though, there's a new company that is pretty set on de-extincting woolly mammoth, and they have a new investor. This investor is called InQtel, and they are registered as a non-profit venture capital firm that is funded by the CIA. They claim that the interest in this company is less about mammoths and more about the capability to do such crazy projects. I know this is more like a future project that might happen, but when we're talking about a huge animal like the woolly mammoth, we have to bring it up. Okay, I live in Canada. That's where the woolly mammoth would also live, I feel like. I don't know. I feel like it just has consequences for me, so I'm concerned. In our number one spot today, we have the Morian viviparis tree snail. This was a species of air-breathing tropical land snails that were endemic to French Polynesia, and their near extinction was caused by a chain of events that happened after something humans did. The African land snail was introduced into Tahiti in 1967 as a food source, but it quickly escaped and began to destroy crops. Biologists wanted to attempt to control the African land snail, so they decided to introduce the rosy wolf snail to the area in 1977. This went absolutely haywire as the rosy wolf snail didn't just control the population of African land snails, but rather started to eradicate all of the snails that were native to the area, which of course includes our little friend. So this one little introduction led to them being totally extinct in the wild. These snails still exist in captivity and there have been attempts to re-release them into the wild, maybe clone them to boost their population numbers, but unfortunately the rosy wolf snail continues to prey upon them, so at this point researchers are unsure if it will ever be possible for them to live in the wild again. Alright guys, that has been our list for today, thanks so much for checking it out. If you could clone your yourself, would you? That's my question for today. All right. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlovsky. I'll see you again soon. Bye. Mm -mm, mm -mm. All right. What's up? In our number 10 spot, we have... <laughs>